Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 481. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about why the first million dollars is the hardest to make. And I wanted to bring this up because... There is a saying that the first million dollars is the hardest to make, but nobody ever says why that is. Well, not until now, because that's what we're gonna talk about today. The reason I think the first million dollars is the hardest to make is because most people don't believe they can make it. So if you're really doubting that you can make a million dollars or become a millionaire or however you wanna frame it, you are in a comfort zone. You're in a belief system that has limits on it. And that belief system doesn't include the fact that you're a millionaire. And that's part of the reason why I've talked to you about changing some of your beliefs and using my affirmation system with true statements in between to change those thoughts and beliefs. Because once you can remove some of those limiting beliefs, then you don't have that issue anymore, that block that fence around your belief system that's holding you back. But here's the thing. If our belief system is holding us back and we can change our belief system pretty easily through changing our thoughts using affirmations and true statements, then what else might it be that's holding us back? Or do we really understand how our brain works in terms of belief? Because There's all kinds of things out there that are telling you that this is the path to prosperity. Creating a wealthy mindset is step one to wealth, but after the mindset, there are other actions that you have to take. And we've talked about that in past podcasts too, how you can get into this endless mindset loop of just working on your mindset all the time. Nonetheless, doing some work on your mindset and addressing your limitations and your limiting beliefs is better than doing nothing. And certainly people don't believe how easy it is to change certain limiting beliefs because they often won't even try using affirmations with true statements. Because if they did for 30 days, they'd notice a huge difference. And the people that have done that do notice a huge difference. But here's the thing, mindset is step one, but we've got to follow that up with solid action. And that's really why I wrote my book because I wanted to give those definite steps of next things to follow. You see, there's these trends of thinking that we just have to spend less than what we earn and somehow that we're going to magically become a millionaire if we just spend less. And so there are these whole tribes of people who are now living in 20 by 20 foot shacks and not living life because they've put financial freedom so high above living the experience of life that they're living a really meager existence. I call them frugalists. And it's not about sustainability. That's a different conversation. This is about voluntarily living a meager life for the purpose of having financial freedom, they think. And they're just saving money at a faster rate and hopefully investing well, because that would help them get their money growing for them and building more wealth and getting them to financial freedom faster. But the sad thing is there can be so much of life that's missed if you're a frugalist, if you believe you can't really have everything or experience everything. I actually encourage the opposite. I encourage people to go out and experience everything especially things that seem to be outside of your financial reach. I talked about this in a chapter of my book. It's on page 70, where I give you five days to a wealthy mindset. And on day three, which actually starts on page 69, 
It's act as your future wealthy self. And it says, I want your imagination to run wild. You are free to dream the fantasies you have had about money and success. Maybe it involves living in a waterfront mansion, traveling around the world, starting your own foundation, or winning an Academy Award. Maybe it's all that and more. The sky is the limit. What do you fantasize about having, doing, and being? Don't worry about how you'll accomplish it. All you have to do is create the thoughts. Thoughts have energy, and that energy, when focused on repeatedly, creates what we want. Most people do not believe they can have what they want, so they don't even try. Get busy fantasizing. Who do you want to be in 20 years? What would you look like? What would you own? How would you dress? What would you drive? Where would you live? Who would be with you? What would you be doing for fun? Think big and add a zero. Now get out of your comfort zone and experience wealth. Go to a luxury department store and imagine you're a billionaire who can afford to buy anything in the store. In my experience, it shifts your thinking. Rather than wanting everything you can't afford, you will suddenly not want anything because you can afford it all. When the lack thinking disappears, your mindset shifts. And I want to just pause there for a moment and say, I think I've told you before about how I used to have mastermind groups and this is one of the exercises I would do is have them go to a high-end store like Neiman Marcus and look at everything, try on jewelry, try on clothes that cost thousands of dollars and just try on anything and everything and experience it as if you could afford to buy it as if you could afford to actually buy it all, the entire store. Or maybe even if you owned the entire store and the chain of stores. Go in with a completely different mindset that's not full of lack. Rather than walking into a store thinking, oh, I can't afford this, or oh, I like that, but I can't even try that on because there's no way I could afford it. All those things that go through our mind, I encourage people to do just the opposite. Go in and think, I can afford everything. It doesn't cost me anything to try it on. I think I'll try on anything I like. I think I'll go and pick out the biggest diamond ring I can see that I love and try it on. These are things that help shift your mindset and help you get out of the self-imposed limitations. So this section goes on and says, another idea is to go to a Bentley dealership and look at cars. And that could be a Ferrari dealership or BMW dealership or Mercedes or whatever kind of car you want. I just use Bentley here. Sit in the car. How does it feel? Is your subconscious telling you that you can't afford it? Don't ever tell yourself you can't afford something because price is irrelevant right now. Tell yourself it's something you choose not to buy right now. Everything is available to you. Try on jewelry that's expensive. Go to open houses of the most expensive homes. Try on a $2,000 outfit or a suit, but don't buy it. I want you to start experiencing expensive things regardless of price. Try them on as if you could buy them. Nothing is out of reach for you. When I went to the Berkshire Hathaway shareholders meeting in Omaha, Nebraska, you could tour private jets in an airplane hangar. You can bet I toured every one of them. I also tried on a $20 million pink diamond ring. Giving your brain the message nothing is off limits or too expensive is an important part of perpetuating a wealthy mindset. That's the end of that section. It was on my bucket list to go to a Berkshire Hathaway shareholder meeting and I specifically sought out buying the stock, getting the ticket, going there with a friend and experiencing the whole thing. I have to admit the least favorite part of the whole thing for me was sitting through Warren Buffett's presentation. It was a lot of common sense. So I can't say that I really learned anything from Warren or Charlie Munger, but the best part of the show for me were all the ancillary activities. All of the companies that they own have a little festival and you get to try the Seas chocolates or go to the bookstore or look at different companies that they own. And one of those was NetJets. And NetJets had the private planes, had the Gulf Streams and the other private planes in the hangar nearby. And of course, I went over and you could tour each one. And I'll never forget, I was 
getting ready to climb the stairs to the Gulfstream jet. And there was a, an airline pilot there standing in uniform at the bottom of the stairs. And he looked at me and he said, where are we flying to today? And I thought, hey, wow, what a great memory for me just to plug in my brain that maybe someday I'll have a private jet and my captain will say, where are we flying to today? It was perfect. It was the best. And whether or not that ever happens again doesn't really matter. It created a whole new neuropathway of possibility in my brain. And that's the whole thing I want you to think about, the possibilities. Just like trying on this enormous pink diamond that's very rare and very expensive and normally wouldn't even be in a regular jewelry store. But because it was Berkshire Hathaway and because they have many billionaires who own the stock, they brought in specialty items for billionaires. And yes, I went and tried on that ring and it was a thrill. Those are the kinds of things that open up your mind, create new neural pathways, make you think differently, make you see possibilities and help you to stop limiting yourself and especially limiting your belief that you can't be a millionaire for some reason. You know, we get in our comfort zone and our comfort zone is what we surround ourselves with on a regular basis. And we get so comfortable in that comfort zone that stepping outside of it feels really uncomfortable and scary. But that's often where we have to travel to, to get to the next level. We have to keep expanding our circle, making it bigger and bigger. And that's what makes you grow. To do that, you have to take risk. You have to do things that sometimes are scary, do things that sometimes you're not comfortable with, do things that require new learning or new experiences. So I want to encourage you to do those things. And I also want to talk about physics for just a minute. There was a, an experiment called the double slit experiment where scientists shot electrons through two vertical slits that looked like an 11. And they expected that they would line up on the other side like an 11. And sure enough, they did. But that's because they were watching and expecting the outcome of the experiment to be that way. When they took the electrons and didn't have any expectation, didn't have anyone observing, the electrons actually went all over the place and were creating waves of possibility. And the explanation is that possibly if you don't have an expectation, everything is just pure potential. But if you have an expectation of what you believe is going to happen, then things line up like you think are going to happen. And I think that's why the book Think and Grow Rich had such a huge impact on me because it talked about those types of things. It talked about the belief that had to come before things actually happened in people's lives. And all these stories of the most successful people of the last well, about 100 years. I think there's power in expectation of what you want. And I think there's power in certainty that you're going to receive it. So although today was a little more esoteric than I usually talk about, I hope that you like this topic. And I definitely do consider a mental aspect of wealth building, along with investing in the very practical things. I think there's a place for the two to be put together. And most financial experts completely leave out the mindset, the comfort zone, the beliefs, the certainty. They leave all of that out. And they simply talk about spending less than you make. There's much more to it than that. And I really believe that step one to building wealth is creating that wealthy mindset. Or as your wealth mentor, I wouldn't be teaching you that. But I definitely believe there is a place for that. It's not too woo woo. It is practical. There is science behind it, much more than I've even shared with you today. And for your homework, I want you to go out and try some of the things I've suggested here. Get a little out of your comfort zone. Get a little uncomfortable. Try on some things that cost a lot of money or go drive an expensive car or go see a very expensive home. I want you to start incorporating these things into your life. They're going to create the new neural pathways of possibility for you and of belief for you. Because the last thing I'll ever advise you to do is to live in a 20 by 20 foot shed. 
you will never hear that from me because I believe you have much more ability than that. I believe you have much more potential than that. I believe you have much more purpose than that. And I believe you can make your first million. And if you've already made your first million, then your next million. It's really a matter of knowledge and action. And that's what I'm here for, to help you with both of those. If you haven't yet picked up a copy of You're Already a Wealth Theorist, Now Think and Act Like One, Six Practical Steps to Make It a Reality Now, pick one up. We're on Amazon in the U.S., Barnes & Noble, bookstores, and outside the U.S. on amazon.co.uk. And if you want to get my twice a day money tips, go to instagram.com forward slash Linda P. Jones. And please subscribe, rate, and review the show. I love getting reviews from you. It means so much. We're almost crossing 2 million downloads, and I'm going to have a special show coming up. So you might just get your review read on the air if you get it done now. Just a little hint. It just might happen. So thank you so much for everyone who's left a book review and a podcast review. I really, really appreciate it. It means so much to me and it helps a lot of other people find my work and help them get to financial freedom as well. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.